Good afternoon, Abbotsford residents. I'm here in beautiful Abbotsford, BC. Last night I was scheduled to do a podcast, a live podcast, as a political politician and talk about what the provincial and federal election, I might look into running into it to debate on the corruption of Mike DeYoung. And I might go for the nomination race in the federal conservative riding. So last night I was scheduled to do a podcast. Now there I want to elaborate to you. You know all the stuff that Abbotsford homeowners been through and the corruption that it was covered up by MLAs and MPs and the mayor himself, Braun, his son leaked that information. But the most vital thing was the Abbotsford police had lost its way of being a police force. It became a buddy-buddy system, racing our cars, beating residents, blocking reports, halting reports, or any charges, unless they cleared it through Henry to the chief to all this, which is corruption. I ran in the election to prove that as a candidate because my city was being targeted. I saw Abbotsford police go up in Yale and target African-American kid, rip him to the ground. I saw him do all this stuff and it just came to mind while I worked with other cities. How come these kids and these people can't go in and lay charges and reports and have investigations to the OCP, the police, and not the Abbotsford police south were blocking them. Or why the chief himself is not investigating major complaints. I started calculating, imagining how many people in Abbotsford would probably be sexually assaulted or that's by Abbotsford police. And there was no complaints. That meant they were doing it themselves. So never mind our homes in Henry's threat. I wanted to go all the way because it's about my city and my residents. And law enforcement itself was not doing the right thing. They were all buddies. Then intimidating Abbotsford with threats. You're causing a public disturbance. You're causing this. I can get you for reckless. The same old thing we've seen down history that it's not working. A scam to upset Abbotsford, then entrap them and threaten them and get them. So let's talk. Last night, I was in front of Abbotsford's library just over there to do this podcast. And I wanted to talk about Councillor Mogill and the black cars that broke him up when he were in for mayor. I wanted to thank that gentleman and say that as an Abbotsford resident, I thought it was bad that Henry used the Abbotsford police and I was witness to it and video filmed it to split his campaign up so he, Mo couldn't win, so Henry could win with Mike DeYoung in this. But I saw Mike and Ed covering that negligence. That would split our two communities, the East Indians and the whites, to hate each other. And I can't let that happen like the mission RCMP said. Mike sure was a part of that. He didn't investigate that. He did that favor for Henry. He didn't bring in under the safety standards. Act. The last night I was running a podcast. An Abbotsford police officer in a marked car, I believe, 139, I think, I'm not too sure, came out of the police station and saw me in the blue coat. He came right at me, uh, alleged, he alleged that he had many complaints here through Abbotsford all day yesterday of me inciting violence, all kinds of stuff, and a public nuisance in this. That couldn't have been true because I was in White Rock and I was under cameras all day in White Rock from 7 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So that meant he was using his uniform to mislead and lie. That's, that's, that's a very bad thing. That there. When he came over, he came over to cause violence, disturb the peace, and do all this. Two other officers walked over with him. They were clear of what this guy did. The man then grabbed my camera stand, so I'm down a camera that was donated by Abbotsford residents, so I had to borrow one tonight, and threw it across his top of his cop car and threw everything, and then said, come here, Mr. Pelican, fucking come here, and got very belligerent. I was on my phone to the lawyer, and I told him, well, I'm calling my lawyer right now because, first of all, I want the people's name that laid these charges, said they saw this yesterday. I knew he was lying. In his rage of getting caught lying, that these people laid complaints against me and he wouldn't be questioned, he grabbed this. See that? 
He threw it on the ground. He smashed my phone. Then incited that he was going to put me in the cell and put the boots to me. The other two officers were trying to stop him, but he carried this rage out very badly. He knew he wasn't going to win. He couldn't provoke me. He was hoping for a reaction that then he could cry that Mr. Pellicott touched him, I'm a cop. The garbage story. I'm a politician. That's what I am. And the freedom of the press, too, if you were a press person, you could do whatever you want. And don't forget, you pay your taxes here. This is your building, not theirs. George Ferguson would be here with me today. He then sped out of the Abbots from the library across the Abbotsford parking lot and fled at a high speed. 911 was called. There was a report done. The staff sergeant was called. I want to just give one point to the Abbotsford police when I was on the phone to the staff sergeant. All I required from the staff sergeant was to file a report and do it honestly and fair. He said, I'll do that. This is where it went bad when Olinoff threatened. They refused to do them reports because it was going to get the company and Mike Sir. This is when Henry hit and ran. They weren't going to do the reports. That ace in that hole is about that report. That staff sergeant did exactly what is required of him to help the general public and not protect his officer that's out of line. But I couldn't come to the conclusion why this officer, about maybe 55, 260 pounds, white, male, black and, and gray hair, would do this. I made it clear. Abbotsford residents have a massive lawsuit that is an organized crime with Henry Braun, Henry's son, threats to drop a lawsuit and videos by Keelan Olinoff, stalking and ringing my house. I do this in front of the Abbotsford police day in and day out. Why? Because of fair justice. Why? Because they sat for two months and they video filmed outside my house like this, pretending they were doing a police file, gathering evidence, making a file. Some of their guys said, they're not doing that. They're trying to scare you so you pull out of the election. They were inflating, we're investigating. We're going to do this like criminals. For two months, I never once came out of my door. My privacy was wrecked, everything. I never once came out and said, what the hell are you doing? Get away from my building or nothing. You can do whatever you want with your camera and your little black on Mark Carp car. When I stood here, I expect the same thing. They couldn't handle that because now it's about them. It's about corruption. It's about the general public seeing and they snap. I'm a politician. I'm not a YouTube video. I don't care about YouTube, but I want what's right for my citizens of Abbotsford and families and residents and the law. This wasn't the law. It was mismanaged garbage. Out of that whole incident, Barry Daniels was the old police chief. Let me tell you what he would have did. He would have phoned me first thing this morning and said, there's an incident. Can we isolate it? We'll suspend the guy and do all this. I will lay charges of the threats on him and everything that needs to be done. I will deal with that. I've dealt with that today. The damage of my private property and everything. But I wanted to show that this is what's been taking place constantly, all the time. Now they sit in broke mode, so I want to elaborate. How is this happening? What's taking place? What did I learn from Darren Brown and what is here? The Abbotsford Police Chief, I call him Cauliflower Ears because they named him that. It was named in jealousy. One of the other guys wanted to be it. They handpicked this guy out of Victoria. I believe maybe Daryl Plunkus maybe picked him or Mike Sir or, or Mike DeYoung or somebody picked him. The police chief is not really a chief. He's not a commander. You can see that. He's more of a politician than a commander. Trying to fix what's right, how will it affect Ed Fast, how it will affect Mike DeYoung, how it will affect that. Rather than how it will affect his life, his residence, and his body of the trust of the general public. When they're caught like this and they're let go, like Mike Sir and Bob Rich, let me tell you where they fled to. Right under David Eby's left hand to work for David Eby. The premier hired them, as these guys are politicians, not police chief. But in the RCMP, if you do a quick study, are you going to the states? A police chief doesn't do that. He drills his man. He requires the best out of his man. He requires you do your job to the fullest, 
He requires all this and he don't turn any complaints away from the general public. All they do is sit up there, this new chief is damage control. Why? It'll affect the way we get money from the province, how we can reward the jobs back to diverse, how we get the jobs back in from the premiers to this. The MLAs and the MPs were this. How did I learn this story? An Abbotsford police officer took me aside and said, I want to tell you why these chiefs are not dressing the general public, are doing this, and they're hanging with these politicians. They are a politician. And you could see the new guy when he came in, he went right away to Alex Mitchell, to Henry Brown, and bodied this. The MLAs and MPs were setting up to own and control Abbotsford. Opposition MLAs and opposition MPs of different parties were working side coinciding. When I went to Burnaby, Terry Beach of Trudeau's Liberals did the opposite of why Ed Fast is doing this. Why are the police doing what's unheardable? When the Abbotsford police were stuck as individuals and recognized the company can no longer hold what's coming because it was too many victims out there, too many residents. That's taxpayers that you give 800, the frauds and everything. I believe Henry took him aside and said, you're all gonna get your shit kicked out of you. You need to do me favors. And caught, somehow coerced these guys into doing what they're doing. Stock, I saw him through Councillor Mogel, threaten and do it to me in the elections. I wanted to show Abbotsford residents, help Abbotsford residents as a politician. That's why I went to Bill Anderson. On the constant abuse under uniform, Uniform was going to take sympathy with the courts, and I saw what Vicky Hopes and Ken's did. Last night's attack on me and smashing my phone that my son bought me as a gift is very hurtful. Smashing the camera that was donated and the stand and everything by Abbotsford residents so I could keep these podcasts for the truth on these victims was very hurtful. It's very bad. It's very saddening. But Cauliflower is his ears, who should have known the report was done last night and the police file was committed, I would have expected a phone call because the staff sergeant made it clear. And there was no animosity between me and the staff sergeant. I filed the report. That is a very serious thing, what his officer did. It's something you don't look for. It's termination. It's gone. Now you got to look into, does he know Henry Brown? He's an older officer. How many complaints went against him and everything? This was unfunctioning. Henry took it away. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what happened to me last night. Abbotsford's good-hearted people and everybody were there for me and saw the abuse of the Abbotsford police. Nobody should have to go this far down the road in order to prove and show that Abbotsford residents are being attacked by their own police force for a mob. Henry Brown, worrying of that he's going to jail for his hit and run loading election to get Ross Siemens so they could get the jobs through, taking electoral signs. That's why I brought the federal conservatives and the BC conservatives and the federal liberals and the NDPs and everybody outside of Abbotsford and went and saw them because these guys were working, Pamela Alexis everywhere. We're all working together. How this kept happening, the MLA, Michael D. Jong and Pamela Alexis, the NDP are coinciding together and allowing Abbotsford residents to be victimized constantly. That ain't no police force. This ain't something an ordinary human being does to another human being and destroys their property. That ain't about, they were trying to prove that I was the nutcase and the retard with these Abbotsford homeowners. But the proof is in theirs. Incompetent people that can't control their anger and this. I worry to Abbotsford residents, how many false accusations have been lobbied against you and by this detachment and the grace of that has always been pulled out by Ed Fast, Mike DeYoung and Henry Brown. To the new chief, that's not how you demand or control or run any company. I don't have to tell you about police business. If you didn't go to school and learn first decency and what's right for the general community and the people that pay you and look after you. Your officer directly, directly last night, damaged property, uttered threats to lock me in jail under a uniform, attacked me. Two officers didn't do nothing, so I'll give them the ace, and carried this act. But this childish brat upstairs with his safety standards act 
and the commander took a commander and cauliflower ears, not even a decent phone call. That's the same thing when Gertie Purdy allowed Henry Brown to run me over and didn't come to the scene. The same thing when Olin Offset dropped the lawsuit against Henry Brown in the videos or I will personally bury you. There is massive corruption in the Abbotsford police. It doesn't have to escalate this far, but I made it clear to Abbotsford and I want to make it clear tonight to the Abbotsford police. Mr. Pelican's hell-bent on the law are going all the way. All these actions prove that Mr. Pelican ain't in the wrong. He's always been in the right, thanks to Bill Vanders and the MLAs and everybody. That is why the federal conservatives, MLAs, and the BC conservatives came to see me. And came to see me because they're involved in a massive lawsuit we are. It's a massive scandal against Ed Fast, Mike DeYoung. Mike DeYoung covered it all. These are the back players that ran Abbotsford Detachment, and I had to go to the RCMP for help, and I had to do this. And last night, this event destroying my private property and everything else, I would expect the courtesy call. This childish brat that wants to stand on global TV and call press conference and do all this, couldn't even pick up the phone call as I waited all day long before I said I would do a podcast tonight from the commander himself to say, we need to fix this. My guy's out, let me reprimand him. This is what George Ferguson and Barry Daniels did. Them times are gone. Greedy, rotten guys that lie, beat Abbotsford residents up, use their uniform for sympathy, pull favors through Henry, through Vicky Hopes, and this. This attack could have went way worse. But my common sense and my knowledge, and my be able to control the situation, I just said, I'll call my lawyer, and he snapped and threw the phone. These men don't believe, I don't believe they should be ever in law enforcement or security, from beating people to punching people. To the chief of police, I knew you were a failure on day one when you came in because you weren't addressing it. I want the cauliflower ears, the chief of police, to announce tomorrow, I'm leaving the Abbotsford police, I'm stepping down, and I'm running for the independent, or I'm running in the election, for the nomination for Ed Fast's position, because that's what he is. He's a political politician. He's not a leader, he's not a commander, he's nothing, and he's gonna listen to the Safety Standards Act and all that. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a camera that I'm very saddened that it got all wrecked in the stands in my phones. I got a donated camera to carry out the podcasts, the freedom of the press, but of us politician being attacked like this. This is what they're going to do to Corky Newfelt, to Bruce Bamman, to the other candidates, to get Dave Sidhu in, to get Marcus Dalvis in, and to get Mike DeYoung in. And they are using this thing here. And that last night proved it. To the Abbotsford police, the chief himself takes full responsibility for this negligence that happened last night. I don't need an investigation, chief. I don't need nothing. You're a screw-up. And a bad screw up you are. This is why I'm asking Abbotsford residents to stand with me on one of the largest protests. Because this, I don't believe, just was an incident on Mr. Pelican. I believe this is a common current thing taking place every single day with Abbotsford police. And we watch it with the elbow and punch them. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Abbotsford police, I'm live here at the APD.